In comics, Ant-Man not only shrinks down to the size of an ant, but also controls ants. He can have them cause a distraction, have them swing by for a pickup, or attack an enemy. But making bugs do our bidding is just something in comic books and movies. In real life, controlling insects is impossible. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I've often been told to let go that there are certain things that are out of my control. These advice givers tell me that until I accept this lack of control, I'll be plagued by frustration and anxiety. Do you know what I say to these people? I tell them to get down on their knees and submit to my will, because if there's one thing that science has taught me, it's that nothing is beyond my control. This includes the largest group of animals on the planet. I'm certainly not the first person to want to use insects to serve their own purposes. They've been used in warfare for a very long time. In the 12th century, King Richard launched beehives from catapults during the Crusades, and the Nazis had plans detailing how they would drop mosquitoes from airplanes in order to cause a mass malaria outbreak. Can you believe the Nazis would do something like that? But this isn't really controlling insects, this is more transporting them and letting them do their instinctive thing. Actual control of insects came later. In the 1960s, researchers discovered that the electrical stimulation of an insect's brain could instigate complex behaviors like a locust's feeding or a cricket's singing. Over the last 50 years, they've been refining this technique. By the late 90s, scientists were controlling cockroaches using tiny electronic bug backpacks. The company Backyard Brains recently turned this into a viable business model. You can now buy your own cockroach control kit for $99 and control your own cockroach army using your smartphone. I highly recommend this as a Mother's Day gift. Once the word got out that you could control cockroaches, you just knew it wasn't going to be very long before DARPA showed up to the party. They created the Hybrid Insect Microelectromechanical Systems Project, or HIMEMS. HIMEMS, really? They jacked into the brain of a rhinoceros beetle and steered it around like an RC helicopter. Then they inserted electrodes into moth pupa. As the moths matured, their bodies grew around the device and integrated with the adult moth's nervous system. That's right, nothing to worry about. The military is just creating an army of deathlock moths. What could go wrong? One of the problems researchers faced was finding a way to power their electrical control devices. Batteries are heavy and interfere with flight, so scientists needed to come up with alternatives. One method uses the kinetic energy created by the insect's wings to power the device. Another uses the chemical energy created by the bug's digestive system. In some cases, a power supply is a moot point because there is no hardware. Fruit flies are now being genetically engineered to have light-sensitive proteins in their nervous system. Laser pulses can direct flight or trigger feeding or sexual behavior in flies that have zero electronics in them. Today, cockroaches with tiny microphones are being prepped to find survivors after a building collapse. And honeybees are being trained to use their chemical scent tracking to identify landmines. I don't want you guys to be paranoid or anything, but it kind of seems like these remote controlled insects are just about everywhere. The next time you see a fly on your wall before you swat it, you might want to find out who it works for. With that in mind, the author of the Audible book I'm recommending this month is the sci-fi master of paranoia. Philip K. Dick's A Scanner Darkly is such a great read, but it's an even better listen when the narrator is Paul Giamatti. It is such a great experience to hear Giamatti talk about invisible aphids and missing bike gears. Audible is the sponsor of this episode, and it's sponsorships like these that allow me to continue this series. If you like science friction and want to lend some support, go to audible.com rusty and download any of the thousands of books they have on offer in any and every genre you're interested in. If this is your first time getting a book from audible.com rusty, it's free. 
And if you start listening to a book and decide you don't like it, you can exchange it for another one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes, check out some of the previous ones, and be sure to let me know what superpower you want.